What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw 4 TV. This may be one of the biggest what ifs in basketball in the NBA over the past 40 years. It may just be one of the biggest, if not the biggest. Because oftentimes when we're doing what ifs, is all these different things have to align with one another. You know, if Len Bias and Reggie Lewis didn't pass away, you know, you, you, you know it's, it's very plausible, but you just never know. But with this situation, we saw the potential. We saw NBA teams really fearing for their collective futures when Elijah Wan and Samson was doing their thing for a couple of years. We saw NBA teams try to make adjustments because they thought that the NBA landscape was evolving in another direction. This is something a lot of young people don't understand. Um, you know, the three-point revolution, whatever. No, no matter how you feel about it, whether it's good or bad, at one point, it looked like the NBA's future was that teams were going to get big. And by that I mean... Teams' front courts were going to be consisting of two centers instead of traditional center than power forward. That was what Ralph Sampson and Akeem Olajuwon were doing to the NBA in the mid 1980s. So, of course, Ralph Sampson uh, was drafted back in 1983, and he was drafted out of, uh, I believe, it was Virginia Union. And Ralph Sampson is one of the great collegiate players of all time. And he was something that we had never seen before at that time. Because, like I said, most players, his height, seven foot four, they're sort of lanky. Um, un they don't have the greatest uh, dexterity. You know, they, they, they you know, a lot of those guys are just big, you know, big bodies. They don't have the best coordination. And whenever you see anybody has any semblance of that at that height, it's 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 something to talk about. But Rob Sampson was special, man. He was strong. Even though he was only 228, 230 pounds, he was strong. He was agile. He had a 36-inch vertical leap. Which was pretty amazing. The guy seven foot four, um, capable shot blocker, capable post scorer. But he also had, as his career progressed, we, we saw it even more. He had guard skills. He he could handle the basketball. He he could dribble. He 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 could do some things that we like. I said at that time, we didn't see in big men. So, Ralph Sampson, um, look at his accolades right quick before I go forward. As I said, he was the, I believe it was the 1983-84 NBA Rookie of the Year, if I'm not mistaken. Let's look at his uh, accolades right quick. Yeah, he was a four-time All-Star. He was a 1985 All-Star Game MVP. All-NBA second team in 1985. Rookie of the Year, as I said, 83-84. All-Rookie first team, 83-84. Three times National College Player of the Year. Three consecutive seasons. Three-time consensus first team All-American. Three-time ACC Player of the Year. Three times first team All-ACC. ACC Rookie of the Year. Number 50 was retired by the Virginia... Uh, Cavaliers and first team parade all American and um, that's right I, I'm say, I said Virginia Union University I think uh, the college he went to is uh, I should know this I'm from, from, from Virginia he went to um, University of Virginia which is the Virginia Cavaliers. 
that's right. So I had it messed up. I had it erroneous at first. But anyway, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, his first year there, I think he averaged like 21 points, 11 rebounds, 3 assists, and two and a half blocks or something like that. And, you know, they weren't a very good team, but, you know, the potential was there because the very next year they got Akeem Olajuwon. And Olajuwon, of course, had this phenomenal season uh, in his own right, first overall pick, lost the Rookie of the Year award to Michael Jordan, but still phenomenal first season for Akeem Olajuwon. And then their first year together, which was 84-85, they went to the playoffs, lost in the first round to the Utah Jazz, but the potential was there. Also, I forgot to mention this, when Elijah Wan joined the team, Elijah Wan's natural position was center. Ralph Sampson, even though he was seven foot four, moved to the power four position. And the reason why he was more of a natural fitted power four, because I mentioned to you before, um, he had some ball handling ability that made him a better fit at power forward. Matter of fact, he was even better, you could argue, at the power forward slot. Um, 85-86, their second year together, they win 51 ball games, and they make it all the way to the NBA Finals, where eventually they lose. Matter of fact, before I mention that, in the 85 Western Conference Finals, they upset the Lakers in five games. Uh, off of Ralph Sampson's, they, they lost the first game, but then won four consecutive games in a row, including game five, when Ralph Sampson hits this improbable catch and shoot uh, shot. I mean, he caught it and really kind of like just didn't even have much time to look at the basket, maybe half a second. He threw it up and it, it rattled home. And they uh, eliminated the Lakers in devastating fashion. Now, they did lose to the Boston Celtics in the NBA Finals. But it does have to be noted that just, what, two weeks before the playoffs started, the Rockets lost John Lucas to drug use. He was suspended for drug violations. Now, you consider the fact they didn't have John Lucas, their point guard, and you look at the fact that, you know, Samson played like shit in the, in the finals, as did Robert Reed. Um, if I mean, there's a lot of what ifs right there, but, hey, if those guys had played decent, if they had John Lucas, they may have beaten Boston. They may have beaten them. Who knows? But everything fell apart, man, after that. The very next year, Ralph Samson starts having knee issues, all right? Um, initially, they weren't considered too bad, but it was a lot more serious as they began to see it became more of a chronic issue. Then, the Rockets lost three players to drug issues. So this is back in the heart of the cocaine epidemic that was hitting the NBA, hitting sports, hitting America as a whole. And they lost three players, including John Lucas, uh, permanently, I think, if I'm not mistaken, as a player, and two other guys. So the team nosedive. I think they didn't make the playoffs that year, and ultimately, by the next year, '88, they traded Ralph Sampson to the Warriors. And by that time, Ralph Sampson was also having back issues. But what if? What if Ralph Sampson never got hurt? Well, I have to say this. If Ralph Sampson never got hurt and he was healthy like a large one and he was able to play like a 15, 16, 17 year career, um, you have to also assume that the other things didn't happen to drugs and stuff, right? So let's say John Lucas never had a drug issue, blah, 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 blah. None of that stuff ever happened. Well, I think that eventually, 
as the Lakers got a little bit older, Kareem, you know, because uh, they already beat him in 80, 80, 86. So, man, <clears throat> that team would have been very, very dangerous for L.A. Very dangerous, especially in the playoffs as the game slows down. As the game sometimes slows down the playoffs and it's a half-court situation, you're going to have those two bigs affect the game more. And that's scary to have a guy like Ralph Sanson, 7'4", could post you up, could shoot, was athletic, could play make, could play defense, two shot blockers up front. <clears throat> I mean, man, you know what I'm saying? But, could, but both guys, especially when they were younger, could and were agile enough to run full court and to contest shots. So, man, I think if the, if they had stayed healthy, well, I put it like this: if John Lucas didn't, you know, get pinched for drugs in '86. They could have beaten Boston in seven, but it still would have been difficult because that was an all-time great team. But I think that they probably – I think they would have beaten the Pistons. I don't think the Pistons would have matched up very well with them. Um, don't get me wrong. I think – that the Pistons' perimeter players would have done okay. But, man, um, the Rockets' interior would have just been too much, man. It would have been too much. It would have been way too much. And, and I think that they probably would have won at least... I, I want to give it at least two more titles. Two more titles. I say 1989... 1990. Hmm. Honestly, <laughs> I take that back. I take that back, man. Ah, uh, man, they 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 might have. Uh, shit, they may have won like five titles in a row, man. Because the Bulls would have been a horrible matchup for them. Uh, excuse me. They would have been a horrible matchup for the Bulls. Horrible. 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 With those two? Mike and Pippen ain't driving to the basket like that. They're going to be shooting jumpers. You're going to have to hope them motherfuckers going in. Um... Lajuan was a beast in the in the finals. Obviously, when the step when the ante went up, Lajuan got better. But people forget though that Ralph Sampson was projected to be better. He was supposed to be better than Lajuan. And then another thing I'm gonna tell you too: had those guys won titles, beard is itching like a motherfucker today. God damn. Oh, my God. Anyway, um, if those guys won titles, uh, I think the NBA would have would have changed. The trajectory of the NBA would have changed. Like, you already saw teams trying to make adjustments to them. Like, Boston got bigger. Because before it was Larry Bird and Cedric Cornbread Maxwell, who was six foot eight. But then you saw uh, <clears throat> the front court change to Parrish and McHale, seven feet, six foot ten. Then the Knicks briefly had a front court of Patrick Ewing and Bill Cartwright, both seven footers. I think had they won titles, you would have seen more of a change in that trajectory with teams starting to get bigger, and also the obvious thing too. 
if they would have won more championships, let's say four or five titles, then Akeem Olajuwon is, I'm, t- I'm sorry, but he probably going to be looked at as a GOAT, man. If he turned into the large one that he became, plus you got Ralph Sampson on the squad, Ralph Sampson, prime Ralph Sampson. Anyway, that's, why, that's how I look at it, man. I think Ralph Sampson, man, if he was healthy, Ralph Sampson would have been himself a top 10 player of all time. Um... Arguably, with his collegiate career, you could make a co- an argument for him being the greatest all-around player. But I think Olajuwon overall would have just been the more dominant NBA player. And I think he would have had a, a case for GOAT. Uh, I mean, he's already considered like top 10 anyway by most people. But if you if you include him with match, you know, put him up there with a healthy Ralph Sanson for a 10-year window, they're going to win more than just two titles in Houston. Houston is going to be a championship city. Now, of course, that's going to alter some things in the in the future as far as them drafting certain guys, and I don't even want to go that far with it. But in the immediate future with those two guys, because that's going to draw free agents anyway, um, those two dudes, they was unstoppable. And I, I'm just thinking if, if the Bulls were like the same team, they already had problems matched up with Houston with Olajuwon. You put Ralph Sampson right there, they're really going to be a problem. The Bulls would no, want no parts of Houston with a, double, uh, a Twin Towers team. No parts. So, yeah, I think they beat the Pistons in back-to-back finals, 89-90. And then I think they pulverized the, the the Chicago Bulls. I think they won five straight NBA championships. And then you can make an argument, you know, after that, maybe Ralph Sampson leaves or retires after 11 years or starts falling off a little bit because you don't, see, you don't really see guys seven foot four stay healthy that long, but let's just say he was blessed with health for a decade, like a rarity. Yeah, I can see five championships, man. Minimum three. Minimum. But they're going to win multiple rings. Multiple rings. But that's just my take on it, man. Uh, Tell me what you guys think.